You're watching Morning at NTV. Yes, indeed. And the hashtag on Twitter is uh, Morning at NTV. For those that are watching online on Facebook, we are streaming live as well as on YouTube. For those that are watching from across the oceans and other borders. We are now going to uh, talk business and sustainability of the banking sector amidst what is being described as economic strain. The reason I emphasize being described is because so many people look at this from well, different perspectives. Just at the start of the show, I spoke about the fact that the credit rating agency, Moody, is downgrading Uganda's credit status to negative. And some people within the Ministry of Finance don't see it as negative. So, however, whatever, whatever you describe, brother, depends on how you're looking at it. But just a preamble before I introduce my guest, the finance and banking sector plays a vital role in the world's economy. And fortunately, it has been facing some headwinds, much to economic detriment. Many have turned to banks for financial assistance in trying times. They've been unable to get what they want because the banks are also apparently are struggling but those that are able uh, to come through for the clients are doing so in very innovative ways this morning we have dennis dumber the head of a treasury at i and m bank uganda to help us wade through these very turbulent economic waters a very uh, warm welcome to the program mr dennis dumber morning chris Thank how you are you me how are you doing i'm okay and how are you uh, great i'll begin right away by shooting it's one year since I and M Bank acquired Orient Bank. Uh, what are the key changes that you have made at this institution amidst what is being described, as I alluded to earlier, economic strains? Okay, um, thank you, Chris. Um, it's one year since we rebranded from mm -hmm. Orient Bank to IM Bank Uganda. Yeah. And through this, I would see, I would talk about the key points that mm. we've seen in there. First of all, we're fully rebranded to IM Uganda. Mm. We're now part of a larger group. A Kenyan regional bank. Mm. We have presence in five countries. Uh, yeah. That is um, Uganda, Kenya, Tanzania, Rwanda, and Mauritius. We are well capitalized and strong regional bank. Mm. And by virtue of this, this has given us a lot of mileage in Uganda. First and foremost, we've um, enabled to have, we have enhanced our proposition as INM Uganda. Mm. So a lot of uh, our cross-border um, synergies have actually come to fruition mm. because we have presence in regional markets. So mm. we have, we've had um, cross-sell in terms of clients, uh, both in Uganda, Tanzania, Rwanda. And also we have enhanced in our proposition that we're offering to our clients. Mm. Uh, key to note, we launched our um, offshore banking proposition because we have presence in Mauritius. Mm. So a lot of our clients can actually have uh, investments uh, done in Mauritius. They can actually uh, invest part of their money in global markets through our joint venture with Bank One, which is uh, part of the INM group. And then in terms of integration, mm. I would say we are fully integrated into the INM group. Mm. And integration is largely uh, people, processes and systems. Yeah. So now we are part of a group in terms of what we're offering to our clients. So you'll get the same service from INM Uganda as you'd get it from Rwanda or Tanzania in okay. terms of our offering. All right. Yes. You speak very glossly of the banking sector, mm -hmm. especially with regard to your institution. When other banks, especially in the last uh, three years, as a result of the effects of COVID-19 mm -hmm. and uh, increasingly the global supply chain having interruptions that have seen many people uh, blame the war in Ukraine mm -hmm. that was occasioned by Russia. How are you navigating this particular challenge? Okay, the challenge that we're facing in the banking sector, Chris, I would say it's not really, I, I wouldn't say it doesn't affect only the banking sector. Yeah. We all know we went through the whole travel disruptions and, and well, pre post COVID or COVID uh, disruption that brought on, uh, we saw supply chain disruptions, mm. lockdowns. Mm. So, by virtue of this, we've seen a slowdown in, in the economic, business. in business and in economic activity. Yeah. So, this has also definitely affected us as a sector. And we've seen uh, GDP growth forecasts have been uh, cut, not even just here in Uganda, but even mm. globally. Mm. And we as banks, being pivotal in the economy, we have to find ways of how we can actually assist our clients. Uh, part of them is that uh, I would speak on behalf of INM in terms of how we're offering customized solutions to our clients. 
We understand our clients are going through hard times. We supported yeah. them during the times of COVID, during the COVID measures that were introduced by Bank of Uganda. So a lot of our clients came through and approached INM Uganda and were able to offer them solutions to ride that particular tide. Now we're facing geopolitical tensions in Russia, like you've mentioned, mm. and we're also seeing an environment whereby we're in a high inflation environment. So in terms of offering, we're also being able to support our clients in being able to offer restructures, accommodative pricing on terms of uh, our products that we're offering them, but also uh, advisory services in terms of particular sectors that are, are still open for business. Mm. At IM, we believe uh, sectors like trade and manufacturing, uh, agro-processing, and also commodity and trade finance are still actually vibrant and can actually ride these storms. And even still, we have special emphasis on uh, SME and mm. micro SME, areas that where we can actually have footprint um, to our clients on the ground, both in the middle and, and in the corporate sectors. Okay. So uh, for many out there, I and M is a bit of a, a gray area. What is I and M? I and M, well, the, 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 uh, the, the acronym is Investment and Mortgage Investment Bank. Investment and Mortgage, mortgage Bank. Bank, yes. Okay. So I and M was founded um, in a Kenyan bank founded by uh, a Kenyan family uh -huh. that has actually had, uh, we have, uh, that has grown through the years um, okay. in, in Kenya and eventually it spread its wings through to Uganda and other regional markets. Uh -huh. INM, I would say, is a strong regional bank um, in terms of uh, it's well capitalized to the tune of over $600 million. Uh -huh. And we have strong institutional shareholders, but also the niche that speaks to us as a brand is that if you look at it, over 75% of our investors are regional East African investors. Regional East so, yes, we might have regional presence yeah. and international presence, but we still have a niche in terms of our core that we speak uh, to the whole East African uh, uh, agenda in terms mm. of who own the actual bank. Uh, talking of, uh, I'll leave investment banking for uh, a discussion for another day and concentrate on uh, mortgages yes. and the portfolio of products that are available for the average Ugandan. Many Ugandans first and foremost struggle uh, to get to terms with the mortgage uh, portfolios and what is out there and what they can go for. Could you just give us an idea of what is available and where best the average Ugandan can go? Okay. Uh, well, the mortgage solution is largely we, as a bank, we come in to help you acquire um, a, your um, home, yeah. I would say. Mm. Or if you're into a commercial um, space, we actually help you get a commercial mortgage. So ideally, what we do is that we partner with you in that long-term journey of acquiring your first home mm. or your second home. Or if you're into a real estate business, we can actually help you um, acquire a commercial mortgage. Yeah. So we finance the difference between a mortgage and uh, yeah, other the normal, loan. normal loans is that yeah. A mortgage is a long-term finance that speaks to real estate. Mm. Or if you're going to buy uh, a property, either you buy it for rent, or you're buying it for purchase, or you're mm. buying it for actual um, living in or staying in. Yeah. So the difference is that a mortgage is a long-term financing, whereby we can actually offer um, f uh, 10 years to 15 years, mm. 20 years, or even in certain cases, 30 years. Mm. And if you notice, um, if you look at the statistics, a lot of our population actually is underhoused in terms of them um, having not houses. So yeah. we as bankers, we believe uh, mortgages would be an approach that people in, um, who are looking at acquiring properties can actually come in and partner with banks. Yeah. Because getting that lump sum to go and buy a particular buy property. A property already yeah, constructed yeah, house. Already constructed, maybe a bit of a challenge. Yeah. So you come into the bank, you talk to us as your bankers, we understand your particular cash flows, then we'll structure for you a particular mortgage, mm. whether it's in local currency, whether it's in foreign currency, then you'll be able to pay over a long time and acquire your desired goal. Okay. Uh, before it became IM Bank, Orient Bank had branches across uh, some of the urban areas within uh, the country. I don't know how far the uh, maintenance or uh, uh, continuing with business in these branches is. How many do we does INM Bank have right now? We have about 11 branches. 11 branches. Yes, yes. Okay. yes 11 branches. So if I'm to speak to that, uh, Chris, yeah. um, just like what's happening in the world, yeah. we, I wouldn't call that we close the branches. Mm -hmm. We term it more of a consolidation. consolidation. We had different jurisdictions where we had closed branches. Yeah. So what we did was that we just consolidated those branches to have a better offering to our clients. And then even on top of that is that the world is ever changing in mm. terms of technological advancements. Even us at INM Uganda, we're also enhancing our proposition in terms of how we serve our clients. Mm. We have enhanced our internet banking, our um, um, omni-channels, 
So by virtue of this, we'll be able to serve our clients better mm. through um, uh, alternative channels. Then also in terms of uh, key niche markets where we can actually identify areas where we can have a presence, we've just opened up a new flagship branch at the Kampala Kingdom, mm. which I urge our clients and um, our viewers to actually check it out. It's a state-of-the-art branch, uh, which is more of a smart or the future of banking. We as IM, so it would be good to also look at uh, that particular uh, location. But in, in actual sense, we also will identify areas where we can actually see presence or growth opportunities, then we'll clearly open uh, branches as IM. Okay, so the central bank uh, continues to uh, set the interest rate for the country, but there are concerns that uh, bankers are not heeding the messages that are coming out from the central bank much. You, one would say, for example, Uganda is uh, pretty much a free market economy, so yes. the bank, the central bank can only appeal <laughs> to banks to follow suit when it comes to setting their own interest. And uh, many of the customers or clients out there are already complaining of the high interest rate. I don't know where this comes in when it comes to INM Bank and uh, the uh, product portfolio. How do you read uh, the times or cooperate, so to speak, when the central bank makes an appeal? Okay, the narrative that the central bank uh, speaks of in terms of um, raising interest rates, mm. they are driven by what we call the monetary policy. Yeah. So in times of high inflation, like what we're experiencing now, mm. the central bank is driving a tightening of monetary policy. Yeah. In other words, they, are inc they raise interest rates so as to uh, achieve what we term as price stability. Mm. So the heat is that even us uh, as uh, commercial banks or at i we are seeing our funding costs in terms of our cost of deposits go yeah. in line with the direction that the central bank has given. Yes, take, yeah. So uh, by virtue of this, um, they are driving to ensure that the price stability is achieved and also um, the uptake of credit is kind mm -hmm. of mm -hmm. controlled or, or, or slowed down. But like I mentioned, we have s particular sectors which are still thriving even mm -hmm. in these difficult times. We have trade, we have manufacturing, and we're revamping our commodity and, and trade finance because historically INM Bank or Orient Bank was largely known as a trade and commodity finance bank. Mm. So through this, we're also being accommodating by offering customized solutions to our clients. We are, you've talked about high interest rates. Mm. We're also uh, pricing them accordingly based on the risk, uh, irrespective of what's happening and by the narrative that's driven by the central bank but we are still accommodative in terms of our pricing. Mm. You come to us, we'll be able to tailor a solution for you, we'll be able to accommodate you even through doing this high interest rate regime. Okay, yes. allow me just go back briefly to the issue of uh, the mortgage portfolios in the country and how the average Ugandan who has some bit of money can yes. invest, especially in the real estate mm -hmm. sector. There are fears of a bubble especially given the fact that many construction projects are coming up everywhere you look. I don't know how from the inside mm -hmm. you are looking at this, whether we are misreading the whole thing and uh, causing unnecessary anxiety. Mm -hmm. Okay, Chris, if you have to speak about real estate per se as a sector, mm -hmm. the bubble that we're talking about, the slowdown in the economy yeah. is not just specific to Uganda. Mm -hmm. We have seen a global slowdown. Yeah. It's happening in the US, it's happening in the Eurozone, even China, countries that are actually have been having exponential growth are also starting to see uh, an effect. Mm. So by virtue of uh, us experiencing a slowdown, the, the bubble that we we'll talk about is uh, the market is actually not, say for example, real estate. Mm. You, uh, the people who are in uh, real estate are, are experiencing maybe a slowdown in terms of people who are actually buying properties. And this particular bubble is not just specific to us. Mm. It's globally, we're globally experiencing the same problem. Mm. But if I would say what's happening, you know, the global narrative is actually... Yeah, as you do that, it yes. could be a global problem yes. that has local solutions. Because mm. the tendency, one of these uh, days or months, mm. is especially for the government mm. to tell us how what we are experiencing is not specific to Uganda. Mm. In a tone that says, hey, come on, meet the challenges yes. on your own because this is not our making. Mm -hmm. We are also being affected. Mm -hmm. And uh, many Ugandans find that a little bit uh, insensitive. And when it filters into the banking or the private sector, that same insensitivity can be noticed. Are in there local solutions to these global problems that are induced by global issues? 
Yeah, yes, yeah, I mean, um, I would say even personally, like um, as I am, yeah. offering customer solutions mm -hmm. is key to us. And I would look at it as a strong point for us being a local, I would term a local or regional bank. Mm -hmm. You'd walk into the branch, you talk to your manager, and we'll be able to offer you a tailored, tailor, tailored solution yeah. to your needs. Say, for example, if you're going to look at a particular mortgage uh, in, um, uh, product that you look at, we at IM can be able to customize that product for you mm -hmm. and offer you the appropriate financing. Mm -hmm. I think for the bubble, it's largely affordability mm -hmm. of what are you actually looking for in, in terms of uh, property. A lot of uh, the reports that have, been, uh, that have been issued in terms, a lot of the properties that are actually being affected, I think, are most, mostly high-end products, mm -hmm. pro uh, uh, projects or properties. Yeah. But there's still a market in, in low and affordable housing mm -hmm. for which we can actually support you as your banker all right yes. your last word as we close this uh, discussion okay my last word of course would just to add um well thank you for hosting me as well mm. and uh to just urge our customers that you know INM, as our tagline says we're on your side we're open for business mm. uh the future is bright for banking yeah we'll get through the headwinds and um we thank you for your support and we look forward to opening the doors and serving you as our clients. All right. Dennis Dumbo, the head of Treasury at I&M Bank Uganda. Many thanks for the insight and, of course, the perspective, especially on the mortgage uh, portfolio there. I hope some of my friends who are looking to uh, venture into some of these have gotten all the information that they need in order to make the best uh, possible investment decisions. That will do it for our business update, but do stay with us. We shall be returning with uh, Tech Note, and uh, we are going to be looking at at the 2022 Economic Summit. Fast forward, and of course, uh, NTV is in partnership with uh, the Ministry of Finance, uh, Planning and Economic Development as far as that initiative is concerned. It's on uh, the 1st of December. We shall be right back. Watching Morning at 